Welcome back to our video series on the Play Framework using Scala. We continue working on making our data model use uh, a database. And we have our model, and most of the methods don't work, but our validate user theoretically works other than the fact that it does not properly handle databases. Um, they are the, the salting of uh, and hashing of our uh, passwords. It just assumes a raw password, and we'll, we'll come back and we'll fix that. Uh, but we need to get this to compile. Now we have the problem here that we are set up to take an asynchronous action and it wants a future, but our helper method up here was not set up to, to work with futures. And part of what is causing a challenge here is I broke one of the standard rules of not putting a return type here. And this needs to be, it had been a result previously, now it is going to be a future of result. And part of the advantage of doing this is by specifying a return type here, we're going to get more informative error messages. Okay, well, this is a result. It's not a future of a result. If you have something that can be calculated very quickly, and you can do it in the current thread, basically you can just call a future.successful. And now this is unhappy because while our f function does give a future of result, this redirect is not. And so now our help, helper method is happy and our validate is also happy. All of these other things are unhappy. Uh, and you can see there's this because we made the Yeah, because our helper here is set up to use futures and they're not giving us futures, some of these, I, they will all have to change to action.asyncs. But none of them are really going to, actually they, yeah, I don't expect they're going to be completely happy. What if we make all of these so that they want Basically, my goal right now is I want to be able to go over and do a full compile and kind of run this. On our model, we're just going to wrap all of our return types. Uh, the fact that that's a unit actually worries me a little bit. Uh, and it could be a future of unit. Adding a task, I am going to change into a future of int because it turns out the database tells you how many things were added. And so that will be useful. Okay, so now the task list of oh, logout was the one thing that wasn't hitting the database, as I expected. All of these other things are currently unhappy. There's actually a really easy thing that we can do here, and that is to make them all be to-dos and comment out the rest of the body. Just so that we can get something running, I'm a big proponent of you take little steps and we make sure that we have things that work. Okay, now nothing is currently read. And if I refresh this, oh, ah, yes, the reverse routing for those routes is not happy because our routes file has not been extended routes for version 5 that's by the way in VS Code I just hit control D and highlighted all the threes and turned them into fives okay so let's go back Refresh. Now I'm still loading page three here, but I want to first make sure that it all compiles. Let's load in five. That also loads in. I believe we have an initial user of mark and pass. Uh, actually, I say that uh, we have nothing because our database had nothing in it. Um, so if, in order to be able to test the login, we will either have to add a user to our data set, and we could do that directly through uh, the 
um, PSQL interface. Or we could have something that looks at our database when we first create our model and checks to see if we uh, if there's nothing there to add something. And the reason, or we could just have it so there are no users to start with and we have to create a user. Hmm, I'm actually right now I'm gonna lean towards that last one uh, because for the purpose of our videos, it is the least amount of, of additional work. There is something that we don't like about this though. Right now, this validation is assuming that the, uh, that the user's password is being typed in in, uh, in plain text, okay, um, and and we can't, we don't want that. Now, because of the way that that our database queries work, remember this is happening in uh, in the Postgres, and we brought in. I don't have up the the libraries, but we brought in a a library called bcrypt that is specifically intended to be used for encryption. Uh, and so I'm actually going to cut down our matches so that we find everyone who has the same username. Now, there should still theoretically either be one or zero of those, but that doesn't validate the user. Obviously, the password has to match. And so our check to see whether or not it is a match is not as simple as seeing as it, uh, if it is non-empty. Uh, though I guess we could do something like a filter. And if the rows, we want to, once again, up, let me, we have a single user row and I want to check their password, but I want to do it in the way that bcrypt does it. Okay, and so if I want to check a password, I can import bcrypt, and it has a check pw method, where we pass it the plain string password of that is what was what the user typed in, and we compare that to what's in the database. So that would be user row dot password. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna filter that down and I will only keep a row, there should only be one of them, but I will only keep it if it checks out in bcrypt. Okay, so now this would work with encrypted passwords. In order to make this happy, we have to add one more uh, method in here. We have to be able to create a user and our task list five, we have a validate, we'll have to fix create user here. Um, in some ways it doesn't really matter how we do this. Create user here is just supposed to add a new element to users. Once again, this is a db.run. Um, and to add something, this is one of the things I love about Slick, is you just say users plus equals an appropriate user row. Now we would specify the user row takes an ID because that is an automatically generated sequence. We are, I can give it a negative one uh, that will be automatically populated with a real value. The username would be uh, the correct username. Now there is something that our create user is not doing here and we'll have to come back and consider that in just a second. It's not con uh, considering the fact that this user might already exist. For this video though, I just want to get to where I can create a user and, and log in to see what happens. So a user row, and then what do we store as the password? Here we're going to use bcrypt again, dot, but in this case, we're going to hash a password. So the first thing that we pass it is the password that they entered. And the second argument is, the, is what's called the salt. And bcrypt has methods for generating salt. I'm just going to use the default version of that. Of uh, user row, users row, I made it plural. Okay. Um, and this right now 
is let's see, found a fixed action required a DBIO of Boolean. This sounds uh, interesting just to make it clear. If I were to change this from Boolean to int, note the error goes away. And that's because when you add things to a table, the database gives you back a count of how many things were added. But our code is written to take this as a Boolean. So what I need to do is then I'm going to map the number of people added and I want to return that add count is greater than zero. So assuming a row was added, that means this was successful. Okay, this is still compiling. We can go to our website and we should be able to type in a user login failed. And we haven't been failed load resource server uh, responded with a 505, not implemented. Um, so we hit one of our methods in here, hit a uh, database action that we haven't written yet. There's inevitably some error messages up in here. We'll come back in the next video and we'll fix that and get it so that we can create a user and actually log in.